A very good morning to all the doctors and everybody who have joined the webinar today. It's a pleasure for us to have you all here. This is Dr. Shivangi Singh and I feel very opportunate that I have gotten this opportunity to present the topic Advancing Asthma Care with Radar Opals. And I'm very thankful, thankful to the BGN Rx and BGN Publication for giving me this opportunity to present this topic in front of you all. So let's begin with the introduction. So asthma. Asthma is a chronic inflammatory lung disease that can cause repeated episodes of cough, wheezing and breathing difficulty. Asthma is a non-communicable chronic lung disease characterized by following features like first one is airway inflammation, airway obstruction mainly due to muscle spasm associated with mucosal edema and stagnation of the mucus, airway hyperreactivity to aerobiological irritants. Now moving on next slide after introduction, definition. Asthma is a diffuse obstructive lung disease due to inflammation of the airways, increased mucus production, contraction of the bronchial smooth muscles with hyperactivity of the airways to a variety of stimuli, a high degree of reversibility of the obstructive process which may occur either spontaneously or as a result of treatment reversible obstructive airway disease so basically the airway lining in the lung become inflamed and swollen in addition mucus production occurs in the airway and muscle surrounding the airway spasm so Combine these cause a reduction in airflow. So basically, asthma is characterized by airway inflammation. That is the airway lining become red, swollen and narrow. Airway obstruction, that is the muscles encycling the airway tighten, causing the airway to narrow, making it difficult to get air in and out of the lungs. Airway hyper responsiveness, that is the muscle Encircling the airway respond more quickly and vigorously to small amount of allergens and irritants. So this was all about the introduction and definition part. Now moving on next slide that is incidence. So incidence of asthma has steadily increased in both developed and developing countries from 1990, 1970 to 2000. The prevalence of asthma has increased 61% over the last two decades. Asthma is a leading chronic illness among children. Asthma results in 10 million lost school days and 3 million lost work days. Death from asthma have increased by 31% since 1980. By one year, 26%, one and half one to five year the 51.4 percent and less than five year 22.3 percent and 77 percent of asthma begin in children less than five years so this was all about incidence now moving on next slide that is etiology so the host factors are like first one is genetic genes predisposing to airway hyper responsiveness sex more in males that the ratio is 2 ratio 1. Second point is environmental factor allergens like indoor and outdoor. The, in indoor, the domestic mites, furred animals like dog, cats, mice, cockroach allergens, fungi, molds, yeast. The outdoors are like pollens, fungi, molds, yeast. Now the infections predominantly viral in 40% of children. Seasonal, seasonal variation of asthma attack is experienced by 35% of children. Diet, certain food also trigger it like peanuts, egg, wheat. So asthma comprises a range of disease and has a variety of heterogeneous phenotype. The recognized factors that are associated with asthma are a genetic predisposition, especially a personal or family history of atopy. That is propensity of allergy usually seen as eczema, hay fever and asthma. 
So asthma also is associated with exposure to tobacco, smoke, and other inflammatory gases or particulate matter. Now moving on, next slide. The etiology that the next part in the etiology is sensitization to allergens, pollutants, particularly environmental tobacco, smoke, mosquito, coil, smoke, sprays, perfumes, etc. The respiratory are like viral infections, psychosocial factors, drug like aspirin, beta blockers. So this was all about etiology part. Now the next slide is about epidemiology. So epidemiology, asthma is a common pathology affecting around 15% to 20% of people in developed countries and around 2% to 4% in less developed country. It is significantly more common in children. Up to 40% of children will have a wheeze at some point, which is reversible by beta 2 agonist is termed asthma, regardless of lung function test. Asthma is associated with exposure to tobacco smoke, inhaled particulates and is thus more common in groups with these environmental exposure. So in childhood, asthma is more common in boys with a male to female ratio of ratio 2 ratio 1 until puberty when the ratio become 1 ratio 1. After puberty, the prevalence of asthma is greater in females and adult onset cases after the range of 40 years are mostly in females. So asthma prevalence is greater in extreme, extreme of ages due to airway responsiveness and lower level of lung function. So of all the asthma cases, about 66% are diagnosed before the age of 18 years. Almost 50% of children with asthma have a decrease in severity or disappearance of symptoms during early adulthood. So this was all about the epidemiology part. Now moving on next slide, that is pathophysiology. So Asthma is a complex condition where interaction of genetics and environmental occur involving many inflammatory cells which release a wide range of variety of mediators. These mediators act on the cell of the airway leading to smooth muscle contraction, mucus hypersecretion, plasma leakage, edema, activation of cholinergic reflexes and activation of sensory nerves which lead to amplification of the continuing inflammatory response. The chronic inflammation lead to structural changes including subepithelial fibrosis and smooth muscle hypertrophy and hyperplasia. This uh, late process is less easily reversed than the acute changes and might end up with the airway remodeling. So the airway inflammation is a major contributor to the pathology of asthma. The Inflammation process include infiltration of airway, airways by eosinophils, activation of T cells and production of cytokines as well other mediators involved in inflammation and increase in mast cell numbers. The disquamation of airway epithelium, the chronic inflammation process cause remodeling of the airway with mucosal thickening and smooth muscle hypertrophy, even in mild asthmatic so inflammation cause an associated, in, associated increase in the existing airway inflammation, hyperresponsiveness to a variety of stimuli. So this was all about pathology part. Now moving on types. There are several types of asthma. The first one is allergic asthma that we call extrinsic asthma also. So allergens such as pet, denders, food molds, dust, and pollen are trigger for this type of asthma. This type is commonly diagnosed with seasonal allergy. Second one is non-allergic asthma or intrinsic asthma that we got. So the triggers for this type of asthma are not allergy related but rather includes irritants such as cigarette smoke, burning wood, air pollution, air fresheners, cleaning product like household, perfumes and fragrances, viral illness and even cold air. The third is cuff variant asthma that we call CVA. Classic symptom of wheezing and shortness of breath are not typical 
of this type of asthma. Instead, a persistent dry cough is commonly noted. So CVA, that is cough variant asthma, can lead to full-blown asthma attack. More common asthma symptoms can be seen in this type. Now, the fourth type is exercise-induced asthma. This type of asthma can affect people within minutes of starting an exercise activity and lasting between 10 to 15 minutes thereafter. The fifth one is nocturnal asthma. As the name suggests, this type of asthma typically has symptoms which worsen at night. Triggers can include heartburn, dust mite, pad dendos, even the body's own natural sleep cycle. Occupational asthma. The last one is occupational asthma, dust, dyes, fumes, gases, industrial chemical, animal protein and rubber latex can trigger this type of asthma. Individual most affected by this type of asthma typically work in industries such as farming, textiles, manufacturing and woodwork. So this was all about the types of asthma. Now moving on next slide that is common sign and symptoms. So the common sign and symptoms comes under the asthma are like coughing, wheezing, maybe epsin, breathlessness while walking or while at rest, respiratory rate increased, chest tightness, chest or abdominal pain, fatigue, bleeding out of breath, agitation, increased pulse rate, and ability to precipitate in sports. So some more symptoms I'm going to dis discuss that is during an acute asthma episode, the sign and symptoms of increasing respiratory distress or breathing difficulty includes like inability to talk in sentences using phrases or only words, retraction like increased use of chest, neck or abdominal muscle, refusal to lie down, a child may prefer to sit or lean forward in order to make breathing easier. Now moving on next slide after sign of after sign and symptoms the next one is asthma triggers so triggers are like allergic reaction to environmental allergens such as pollen mold dust mite or animal dander colds and viral respiratory infection Exercises for some people, exercising can cause an attack. Changes in weather, exposure to cold air, or sudden temperature changes. Um, next is irritants such as tobacco, smoke, air pollution, paints, and cleaning agents. Strong odors and perfumes. So air pollutions are like many things outside can cause an asthma attack. Air pollution includes factory emissions, car exhaust, wildfire smoke and more. The dust mites like you can't see these bugs but they are in our homes. If you have a dust mite allergy this can cause an asthma attack. Molds, molds are like damp places can spawn molds which can cause problem if you have asthma you uh, don't even have to be allergic to molds to have an attack pads uh, like your pad can cause asthma attack if you're allergic to pad denders so breathing in the dander can irritate your airways the tobacco smoke if you or someone in your home smokes you have a higher risk of developing asthma you should you should never smoke in enclosed places like the car or home the best solution is to quit smoking now after triggers i'm moving on the next slide that is the management part so managing asthma reducing your exposure to triggers wherever possible like air conditioner are handy in that they can reduce the amount of airborne pollution around you or pollen around you, lower indoor humidity level and exposure to dust mite. Maintaining a healthy weight through a nutrition diet and regular exercise, an asthmatic person shouldn't become fearful of exercise. Regular activity can help to straighten strengthen the heart or lungs which in turn will help to control asthma symptoms being overweight also worsen asthma symptom yes as well as causing other health concerns also if you're overweight 
you'll get some other can help uh, pathologies also it is important to be mindful of your activity and pace yourself when you need a break between tasks or activities allow yourself a breather overdoing things will contribute to worsening your condition avoiding or quitting smoking eat plenty of fruits and vegetables there are a good source of antioxidants such as beta carotene b vitamin c and e which may help reducing lung swelling and irritation that we also call inflammation caused by cell damaging chemicals known as free radicals take in vitamin d people with more severe asthma may have low vitamin d level milk egg fish such as salmon all contain vitamin d even spending a few minutes outdoor in the sun can increase the vitamin d level consuming a diet that is low in processed foods and high in fresh food and vegetables so some lifestyle changes i also want to discuss like you can also minimize the dust by replacing carpets or hand uh, hardwoods flooring using washable curtains or humidifier can help to maintain optimal humidity level you can also get into the habit of preventing mold spores like in the kitchen or bathroom reducing pet dander cleaning regularly and covering your nose and mouth during cold weather and food which worsen asthma symptom bring on bouts of heartburn and indigestion that we also know called gerd can also be avoided so managing the symptom i'm going to discuss about the symptoms uh, also if a person experience an asthma episode they should try to take the following steps the first one is sit upright stay calm try to breathe slowly and steadily second for people who have a rescue inhaler which is usually blue take one puff every 30 to 60 second if the symptoms do not improve or the person does not have inhaler call for emergency help and the last one is continue to use the inhaler while waiting for help to arrive so this was all about the managing the symptom how you can manage your symptom if you have asthma attack so this was all about the asthma from my part now i'm going to discuss a case with you all so the case illustration i'm going to start my case presentation a male patient of age 32 years reported at my clinic with the chief complaints of cough recurrent breathing difficulty wheezing since 3 years dry cough with suffocative sensation while talking laughing from exposure to dust cough better by expectoration and drinking water expectoration was scanty while when attack get worse dyspnea and wheezing start with cough and he has to take inhaler to get relief he takes inhalers two or three times in a day headache while coughing now moving on next slide the history of present illness the history of present complaint the patient was apparently well 3 years back he started suffering from recurrent episode of cough with breathlessness and wheezing the frequency of episodes was once every 2 month he has taken allopathic treatment without much improvement he has to use an inhaler daily dry cough with suffocative sensation while talking laughing from exposure to dust cough better by expectoration and drinking water respiratory difficult and respiration difficult and hysterical headache while coughing the past history in the past he had suffered from renal stone in march 2010 the patient had a history of ringworm over back and shoulder 4 years ago treated with antifungal and local steroid applications also recurrent episode of viral fever with throat infection took allopathic treatment and got relief now in the family history the father uh, asthma for 15 years taking allopathic medicine mother hyperthyroidism for 8 years taking allopathic medicine now the mental journals of my patient the patient is having anxiety about his condition or health there was also anxiety or palpitation when he heard when he heard any bad news rush of th thoughts when alone 
do not open up easily especially with the opposite sex he got irritated and angry easily because of his disease condition the next slide is physical journals now the physical journals of my patient are like thermal reaction is ambithermal appetite he has good appetite taste taste for warm food and aversion to sweets thirst he become thirsty so often in drink 3 and uh, half liter of water every day urine normal maturation there is no problem in urination stool normal satisfactory and semi solid sleep the patient is uh, taking sound sleep dream nothing is specific so thank you so much for staying with us we will starting the presentation and training how can we reportrize this case with the help of radar opus i will be sharing my screen to all of you so this is dr shivangi and i will be demonstrating you all about how you can get started with radar opus and how can we reportrize the case so before i start let me explain to our viewers how this interface work on the right hand side panel of your screen you have a small chat box may you may type your question or whatever message you have right there and press button next to it to send it to us okay now i'm going to start my presentation i'm going to share my screen so whenever you open your radar opus software it will open exactly like this on your main document screen synthesis adonis repository is open by default synthesis repository is exclusively available in only radar opus software the above icons are known as icon bar or toolbar these icons are known as icon bar or toolbar and these five icons which are present on the left hand side of your screen are known as primary icons consist of repertories references patient management remedies and families now i'm going to start my repertorization so for repertorization first of all i'm going to the repertories icon if you click on this repertories icon you'll get all the list of repertories radar comes with multiple repertories so whatever repository you want to open you can scroll else you can search with the help of this search bar search for a repository write down the name of the repository that you want to search in the search bar and you'll get the result so today i'm going to do my repertorization from synthesis adonis repository this repository is a successor version of synthesis treasure edition so the number of rubrics and remedies have been increased in this repository Now my donors have open on my main display screen. So for doing the report registration from this repository, I will be needing few icon. The first one is this binocular find rubric. If you click on this binocular, you will get this navigation window on your main document screen. It contains all the chapters that belongs to this particular repository. Now I'm going to start my report registration. The first symptom I'm going to take: the my patient is having the anxiety about health. So anxiety is a mental symptom. I'm going to the mind chapter. If you click on this mind chapter, you'll get all the rubrics. They are arranged alphabetically. You can search your rubric by scrolling like this. Else, you can search with the help of this search bar. Start typing the first letter of the rubric you wish to see. Write off, write down your symptom in front of this search bar. The patient is having anxiety about health. So health. about write down the initial you will get your rubric glow now press enter button now my rubric have open on my main display screen from mind chapter anxiety is my rubric health about is my sub rubric now i'm going to add this rubric into the clipboards so basically we have multiple clipboards here they are just like our repository sheet so for doing the report registration you have to add this rubric into the clipboard and it will automatically get reportized so for taking any rubric into the clipboard we have three method now i'm going to tell you the first method that is drag and drop with the help of your cursor you can drag it and drop it next two method i'm going to tell you with my next subsequent rubrics the next symptom i'm going to take the patient is having a uh, uh, the anxiety or palpitation when he heard any bad news so patient is having ailments from bad news so i'm going to the mind chapter again mind 
I'm typing here ailments from right down the initial you'll get your rubric below as I told you ailments from bad news bad news press enter button bad news ailments from bad news let me write down again ailments from bad news my rubric have open on my main display screen for mind chapter ailments from is my rubric bad news is my sub rubric now i'm going to add the second rubric into the clipboard with the help of second method and my second method is plus button plus button on your keyboard is your second method as soon as you pressed your plus button your rubric is added to the clipboard i'm going to take the next symptom a patient is having rush of th thought when he alone so i'm going to the mind chapter ago again i'm right down here i'm typing here thoughts rush alone when my rubric have open on my main display screen from mind chop chapter thoughts rush alone win now i'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with the help of third method and my third method is this icon take the current rubric icon next to this binocular we have this icon as soon as you clicked on this icon your rubric is added to the clipboard i'm going to take my next symptom the patient is having a difficulty in respiration so i'm going to the respiration chapter difficult respiration having difficulty in respiration so difficult press enter button on my rubric have open on my main display screen from respiration chapter difficult i'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with the help of first method as i told you my first method is drag and drop with the help of your cursor you can drag it and drop it the next symptom i'm going to take a patient is having wheezing respiration so i'm going to the respiration chapter again respiration i'm typing here wheezing press enter now my rubric have open on my main display screen from respiration chapter wheezing is my rubric now i'm going to add this next rubric into the clipboard with the help of second method and my second method is plus button as i told you my second method is plus button on your keyboard as soon as you pressed your plus button your rubric is added to the clipboard i'm going to take the next symptom the patient is having difficulty in dust the patient is having the resp uh, respiration difficulty while going in dust I'm going to the respiration chapter again respiration difficult dust is from I'm going at I'm going to add this rubric that is from respiration chapter difficult dust as from I'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with the help of third method and my third method is this icon take the current rubric icon next to this binocular so as soon as you pressed this icon take the current rubric icon your rubric is added to the clipboard now I'm going back to my navigation window the next symptom i'm going to take the patient is having aggravation in cough while talking so i'm going to the cough chapter cough patient is having aggravation while talking so talking aggravation press enter button on my rubric have open on my main document screen that is from cuff chapter cuff talking aggravation now i'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with the help of first method and my first method is dragging and dropping with the help of your cursor you can drag it and drop it i'm going to take my next symptom the patient is having suffocative cough so i'm going to the cuff chapter again cuff the patient is having suffocative cough forget it and my rubric have open on my main display screen from cuff chapter suffocative and i'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with the help of second method and my second method is plus button 
Now, as soon as I press my pressed my plus button, my rubric is added to the clipboard. The next symptom I'm going to take the patient is having amelioration in cuff by expectoration. From expectoration, the patient is having amelioration in cuff. So I'm going to the cuff chapter again, cuff. Expectoration, just write down the initial, get your rubric below. Amelioration. Now my rubric have opened on my main display screen from cuff chapter. Expectoration is my rubric. Amelioration is my sub rubric. Now I'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with the help of third method. And my third method is this icon. Take the current rubric icon next to this binocular. As soon as you press your this icon, your rubric is added to the clipboard. The next symptom I'm going to take, the patient is having aggravation while laughing. Aggravation in cuff while laughing. So I'm going to the cuff chapter again. Cuff. Laughing. Aggravation. Now press enter button on my rubric have open on my main display screen from cuff chapter. Laughing aggravation. I'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with the help of drag and drop method. The next symptom I'm going to take the patient is having headache during cuff. So I'm going to the head chapter. Patient is having a headache or uh, during cuff. So I'm going to the head chapter, head, write down here, pain. Cuff during aggravation. Now my rubric have opened on my main display screen from head chapter pain cuff during aggravation. I'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with the help of second method and my second method is plus button on my keyboard. So as soon as I press my plus button, my rubric is added to the clipboard. Next symptom I'm going to take. The patient is having desire for warm food. So I'm going to the genetics chapter. You will get the desire and aversion in this general T's chapter. Write down here food and drinks chapter. Food and drinks. Patient is having desire for warm food. So warm food. Desire. Press enter button. Now my rubric have opened on my main display screen from Jantis chapter food and drink. It's my rubric warm food desire my sub rubric. Now I'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with the help of third method and my third method is this icon. Take the current rubric icon next to this binocular. So as soon as you click on this icon your rubric is added to the clipboard. Now the last symptom of my patient is my patient is having aversion sweets so I'm going to the journey's chapter again write down here food and drinks the patient is having aversion to sweets sweets aversion now my rubric have open on my main display screen from journey's chapter food and drinks my rubric sweets are virgin sub rubric. Now I'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with the help of this drag and drop method. Now I'm going to drag it and drop it. Now I've taken all the rubrics into my clipboard. Suppose you want to go to your analysis or report digestion. So click on this clipboard. You'll get your chapters, rubrics, sub rubrics. You'll get your report digestion. You'll get your probable remedies as well the grading. So we have taken 13 rubrics here. So arsenic cover all the 13 rubrics and the total is 25. If you add these number like 3 plus 1, 3, 3 plus 1, 3, the total will be 25. The phosphorus cover 11 rubrics out of 13 and the total is 22. So if you want to read any remedy from your probable remedy list, so you can open it directly by double click on it. Like you want to read sulfur from this list. So just click on your sulfur and your sulfur have open on your main display screen. One thing I want to tell you, our software is 
known for all in one interface so whatever icon you open will remains open in different different tab so suppose you want to go to back go back to your analysis so in this icon my analysis remains open in this tab so click on this tab now i'm coming back to my analysis so in the same manner you can read any remedy from your probable remedy list now i'm going to tell you about the prescription part the medicine i have prescribed that is arsenic album 200 in three doses eight hourly followed by placebo 30 four pills tds 10 days was prescribed on first visit considering the repertorial totality the journal management i have given to my patient along with medicine counseling was also done to calm the mental irritability and other complaints avoid the triggers entirely now the second follow up he had started improving well patient had no cough and dyspnea suffocation improved and he sleeps better require less of the inhaler takes inhaler occasionally have stopped taking anti allergic medicines the weakness and anxiety better slight weakness on exertion and tendency to catch cold is reduced so i have prescribed arsenic album 200 single dose state orally followed by placebo four pills tds 8 hourly for 10 days the again journal management i have given to my patient along with the homeopathic medication the patient was advised regarding aggravating factor of asthma should be avoided and limiting or completely avoiding smoking and smoke exposure so the next third follow up during the third follow up the patient came back with 90% of amelioration of his symptom inhaler is not needed overall much better the patient has been better ever since and has not had any episode of breathlessness for the past two past eight months overall improvement in the patient was noted with arsenic album has he was kept on placebo and uh, he was advised to report only if symptoms recurred so i have prescribed placebo tds for 15 days so this is my repertorial sheet so this was all about asthma and how can we repertorize the case with the help of synthesis adonis repository and radarupa software from my part so all right now would like to request all our viewers to comment in the chat box with their questions now we will begin the question answer round so alana wants to know the first question i'm going to take alana wants to know can asthma be cured basically no asthma can't be cured but it can be managed the children may outgrow asthma as they get older now i'm going to take the next question from a viewer side is how can i discover my allergies basically if you suspect that you may have allergies like a triggers for your asthma ask your doctor to refer you to a broad certified allergist who can perform skin test or any other procedure needed to properly identify your allergies so another question from a viewer side i'm going to take that is uh, wait uh, do people really die from asthma uh, okay nice question it is true that people can die from asthma but you may have heard or read about this is in the news recently but it is rare asthma is a serious very serious disease basically but there is absolutely no reason for anyone to die from it learning about what triggers your asthma the early warning signs to look for and how to use your medication the right way will help you to keep your asthma under control so i think we have almost taken up all the questions so let's take the last question from the viewer side when i exercise my asthma symptom get worse should i stop 
basically everyone benefit from some form of exercise if exercise make your asthma symptom worse it means your asthma is not well controlled tell your doctor so changes can be made so that you can exercise without express experiencing symptoms you can uh, learn more about the exercising with asthma okay so uh, let me take the last question one more question from a viewer, viewer side i'm going to take can you catch asthma from another person no no asthma is not contagious you cannot catch asthma from any per from any other person so let's wind up here thank you everyone i would like to th thank all the viewers and the homeopathic fraternity who have joined us here today thank you thank you so much keep learning keep improving have a great day